I'm sure by now many of you have heard of this nickel short squeeze that is currently playing out and has attracted the market's attention. The price of nickel has soared hundreds of percent from the start of its move. The London Metal Exchange, one of the most significant institutions, has shut down and halted trading for nickel for the current time being. And a lot of investors are wondering, what does this mean for global markets and potential flow on implications for other metals and commodities around the world? It truly is a crazy thing to view. If you look at the chart there, it's a parabolic line upwards and it's far eclipsing even the moves of the 2000s during that commodities rush. It is a crazy past period. Today, we're going to unpack what's been playing out in the nickel market. At a broader macroeconomic landscape as well, we'll talk about the nickel sector, the use cases for it, and how it could play into this electric vehicle and EV revolution. But then, of course, we'll talk about this nickel short squeeze, what has been evolving, and how markets have ended up with this significant and momentous event. So before unpacking all of the recent news, and of course, having a look at why this trade has unfolded the way it has... It makes sense for us to take that step back and have a think about the nickel sector more broadly. So nickel, I'm sure many of you have heard about it, associated with the electric vehicle revolution. And it definitely will and has an important role to play in global electrification. But actually the use case for nickel predominantly is still for stainless steel. This makes up around about, it's above two thirds and potentially up to three quarters of the global use for nickel. It's useful for alloys, and it's also corrosive resistant as well, which of course makes it a key metal. But what's interesting surrounding it is that electric vehicle battery production is only around about 10% of the nickel use cases. But of course, this is going to be the fastest growing sector for nickel use, and it has the potential to continue to scale and grow moving forward. And that's why there's a lot of eyes on the nickel opportunity. And so then to understand nickel's role in EVs. We've of course talked a lot on the channel about anodes. We know that graphite anodes are a key component of them. But of course, the lithium ion batteries have got the other side as well, which are cathodes. And the majority of EV cathodes contain nickel. You might be familiar with NCM or NCA. These are different types of cathode compositions. And the reason why nickel is used for these cathodes is nickel helps it deliver higher energy density and storage capacity, which of course means that it's an efficient metal to use. In 2019, just for a bit of an insight into the scale of nickel, in 2019, 95% of electric vehicle passenger vehicles, according to one study sold, were using either NCA or NCM. So it's nickel, cobalt, manganese or nickel, cobalt, aluminium. It's also worth noting as well that chemistries are starting to change with chemistries like LFP slowly starting to emerge commercially. However, nickel and nickel-based battery chemistries will still have a key role to play moving forward for years to come. You can see here on the visual on the right, electric vehicles, of course, have got a significant role to play in driving up demand for a range of different metals from cobalt to lithium, graphite, copper, you name it. But nickel is one that looks like it's going to have a significant uplift in terms of demand as it plays a continued role. Very keen to know your thoughts on it all as well. So drop in a comment below what you think about nickel and its role within this broader electrification globally, but also what you thought about this recent short squeeze and the crazy events that we're seeing play out on the LME at the moment. And so that's a bit of the backdrop and how things have been positioned over this past period. But of course, we know that there's been geopolitical tensions and the Ukraine effect and everything is playing out between Russia and Ukraine has and will continue to affect supply chains moving forward. So to understand that, Russia is the third largest producer of nickel, which is over 5% of global production. However, it makes up around 17% of battery grade nickel production. Now this is important because battery grade or class one as it's called is 99.8% purity. So you need very high grade and high purity nickel. And this is where Russia has got a significant amount of class one nickel sulfide deposits. It's also worth noting that over the past decade, there's been a shortage of high quality nickel sulfide ore discoveries. So they really are worth their weight in gold. And this is why there's been a significant fear surrounding everything that's playing out in Russia and Ukraine. We know about the disruption to supply chains, but also any further economic sanctions that may mean that supply is further disrupted. And so markets have started to get scared about all of this. And this has started to flow through to what we are seeing playing out at the moment. And so then your question might be, what's happened? It's worth noting with everything that's playing out at the moment, it's not isolated to nickel. Of course, the moves and the magnitude of the moves have been significantly seen the most evidenced in the nickel move, but oil, gas, 
other metals, agriculture supply chains, they're all under pressure right now. And we're all familiar with the story. We know that supply chain bottlenecks, disruptions to supply chains, of course, destruction of different ports and different abilities for these commodities to move around the world means that as supply is reduced, if demand stays the same or it rises, economics 101, then prices are going to rise. So we've seen that supply chains are under pressure. But on the same token, liquidity has been starting to disappear in some of these key markets as well. And so we know that higher volatility reduces liquidity. We of course know that we're in a period of high volatility over this past period. The VIX is trading around that 30 level, but as higher volatility reduces liquidity, well, what happens when liquidity is removed from markets? That increases volatility. And of course that can become an almost self-fulfilling prophecy. And so over this past period on the nickel market, positions began to be closed. We saw a significant spike. There was very few sellers available. And then of course, as we know with a short squeeze, you have to buy back. And so as shorts look to cover their positions, then with very low levels of liquidity, this drove the prices higher and higher and higher and higher. And that's what we saw. It was a fundamental driver that initially started everything, but it's obviously become a fin financial problem more broadly. This visual here on the right is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. We can see here over the past period, the commodities sector has really soared higher. I mean, you'll notice it at the petrol tank as you see your price for petrol and gasoline moving higher. We've seen also the disruptions to wheat and grain and food prices and the potential flow on effects that may have. But this is just an insight to show that it's not only isolated to the nickel market, but the broader supply chains have become under pressure. And so then with everything that's played out, you might be wondering, what were the results? This chart here is, it's almost unfathomable to look at the chart. It is a parabolic state, straight line. But you might be wondering, what happens from here? What's the next part of the story? Firstly, if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to share it out. If you're new here, welcome. We make daily videos each and every day. So make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. You won't miss any of those. So the nickel price spiked to above $100,000 a ton quickly. Just to give you an idea about the magnitude and the scale of this, the price of nickel over the past five years, so we're talking a long sustained period of time, has risen by just over $10,000. And so to give you that understanding, over the past five years, it's risen about $10,000. Over the past week alone, depending where you're measuring from, the price of nickel with this spike has risen by $70,000 plus. The deviation from the conventional mean is so far away. It is almost unbelievable to be able to see. And so investors are wondering, where to from here? I guess the flow and effect and the reason why the LME shut down trading and halted trading for nickel was brokers were struggling to pay their margin calls against the shorts. There was, of course, some significant shorts that were looking to cover, but there was a major struggle and we saw the price continue to get bid up. But now hopefully the LME is hoping that this is a bit of a cooling off period. They can actually work out where both sides of the trade are currently sitting. And it looks like potentially the London Metals Exchange may not open until March the 11th has been a date that's discussed. But for now, uncertainty persists. Nobody knows what's going to happen from here. We know we're in a highly volatile period and there's a lot of uncertainties playing out across the broader market, not just in the commodities, but this really does typify it. If you're interested in understanding more across a range of different commodities in the EV battery material space, we'll leave links to those up above. Let us know your thoughts, drop in a comment below. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for joining us. For now, stay well and happy investing.